that. And here we go. I think I connected to the reallibertymedia.com. This is Flash at In a Perfect World. And I've been dodging the show for the last couple weeks. Didn't really have a lot on my mind to talk about, but we'll get into that. Anyway, uh, thank you, Grimner, for everything that you do for us. So we got places to play and, you know, act crazy when, when the mood strikes us. And if you're in the chatting mood, we got some bots and bodies to occupy your typing extravaganza. And that would be Barman and Beetle. Grimner and Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chalstoni, Circulo, hey honey, uh, Chloe, me, flash somebody, but I don't really do so well, especially solo, doing the chat room, it's a nightmare, and uh, we've got, where did I leave off that, okay, me, uh, Frumpy Work up in Canada, and Jabber Doctor 2, and Jays, Nines, Jays, Meister Brow, hey Woody, Prince, Rob Works, the bubbler, trust no one, oof, a oof, Vanna White, Weather Dork, the Phantom, CC66, Chloe again, double dipping, and we've got Cyborg, Noodle, Ensiv, Frumpy, Kiss, Matt, WJ2002, Mr. Snick, Pone Sauce, Quasimodo underscore smart as the holiest Roger and Zpix. So if you're feeling chatty, those are your victims for the <coughs> duration of the show. Probably do an hour. When I do a solo, it's boy doing an hour is a lot. <laughs> doing an intro is a lot. So anyway, thanks a lot, Grim. Glad you guys are still out there. You know, living large in the land of the free and the home of the debt slave. But apparently what I've been seeing on the interwebs the last couple of weeks, it's just come up to uh, Tuesday night and I just didn't really want to do the radio. I felt that I've done bitched enough on the other two things, so I thought I'd give everybody a <laughs> night off <laughs> if, you, if you want. <laughs> but... Well, I think I'll start out the uh, the nagging and bitching program tonight. It's called, It's a Hoax, but they called it a study. And you might have to fix the grammar. I don't know if I put the comma in the right place there, Grim, but <laughs> that's, that is my title for this epic saga tonight. And the first thing I want to groan on about is uh, this herd mentality bullshit. Mother... I mean, jeez, herd, that, people talking about animals, not, not us. We're not a herd. <laughs> we are a carbon-based life form with the ability to think and opposing thumbs. It gives us a little bit of an advantage over, say, a herd of anything. But <laughs> now they've got this n nice hoax going on. They call it COVID-19, in case you missed it. Uh, it's brought a lot of changes to the uh, what's normal in society now. Because I remember when being called part of a herd was an insult. And it seems to be turned around now. Being part of the herd is, ooh, that's the goal. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. And every fucking time more than 10 people get together and tell you about something they're going to do, it's either a lie or what they do is like, no, that that's crazy. Don't do that. <laughs> because we have laws to protect us from progress. And I think Larry and Rob have brought that out on the uh, Drop in the Coil podcast a couple of times. Through the, uh, the electoral, whatever deals they call these, the Senate, the Congress, some of these butt nuggets. And what they do is they write these uh, restrictive laws in the basics of how you operate a business so that you're limited. You can't, you can't go beyond a certain quality because if you do, you're breaking the rules to do it and then you're cutting out all, all your competition because you're going to put out a a superior product that nobody else would uh, 
everybody would fight to have it. So hmm, it, it's a we live in a really weird time. It's a kind of a like a con job, but there's so much to it that well, if you look at it from a certain angle, oh yeah, I see what they're talking about, and that that's where most of us have been trained to stop. You know, I like it, I don't like it, end of story. Not, let's investigate this a little further and see what it's made of. No, th these these ideas, they're all gone. We're finished with all that. Now we're into, hey, I hope the inoculation kills a whole lot of people. Because I read that, on the, uh, <laughs> read that on the internet over the last couple weeks. Um, this obsession that these people have for, they're going to save their self. By punishing you, because you could be a threat to them. Now, I mean, it's hard to really discuss this alone. Because <laughs> I see it through my perspective, and everybody else, well, everybody else has their very own perspective to see it through. And what irritates me doesn't bother somebody else. <laughs> it's, it's called freedom, and Freedom, living in freedom is, it's more, the, the only problems I have living in freedom is the ridicule from statists telling me how I don't live in freedom because they judge this this way or they judge that that way. And Cirque and Grimm did a show based on that last night, so I, I guess that's, I should get off that topic, but hmm. It's all, see, here we go, back to your show, Grim. It's all connected, you know, because I'm sure if you l listen to shows over the years, we've all said that to somebody, because it's common. It's common to the nerd, it's common to the dork, maybe not so much to the voter. Voters uh, tend to think that they know what's good for you. Not what's good for them doesn't mean a fuck. What they're concerned with is you, baby, and... They're going to vote until they get their fucking way. Hmm. How do you avoid all that? Where did the uh, where did the individual just disappear? Did we all just vanish? And now we are really just a big blob, like a big herd of faces that have nothing to them. You know, just eh, like a sea, like looking out the ocean. You wouldn't know one ocean from the other unless you were familiar with oceans. So if you looked at five pictures of water, you couldn't tell anybody which bit of water that was off of. <laughs> well, yeah, well, anyway, maybe that wasn't the best example of what I'm trying to get to. Mm. Yet, I think I made my point with uh, the herd mentality is it's insulting to me. I don't think that we're all the same, and I don't think that you can test everybody and get the same end result. People are going to vary, and they're going to fluctuate. And one one temperature is going to be normal for somebody, and it's going to be high for somebody else. And they're overlooking all these uh, basic s similarities, but they're not. Uh, Ninety-eight point six is an average normal temperature. But what they don't tell you is what is it the average? What are the outside numbers? <laughs> Okay, 98.6, but between what and what? Well, I don't know. That's just what they told me. And I'm 98.7, so I must be running low. <laughs> but they've left out average over the years. and We don't even probably even think about it anymore. Hmm. I wonder if my temperature goes up when I have those brief moments where I flash on. Joe Biden could be the next president of the United States. I mean, it's possible because, look, Trump did it. So, <laughs> and, and I just wonder if, if that moment where my blood pressure goes up because he's more hopeless, in my opinion, than Trump, and Trump's hopeless. There's no way to fix this. It's, it doesn't really make any difference. But I think that the, Biden is more insulting than Trump, and Trump is an insulting, rude, pompous, dumb shit that, you know, gets it right every now and again. <laughs> but then the people that handle him, 
come back and correct what he said. What he said that was correct gets corrected by the people that own him. And then he's got to, you know, go back and, and be a statist again. <laughs> he doesn't get to play. He's, it's like he is playing two parts to me. You know, he goes in there and he says the dumbest fucking thing he can imagine. And he goes, ha ha. And then they come, okay, you got to clean it up. Right? So, and then he comes back and he says something intelligent. And they just keep juggling it up. So you never know what's going to happen. It stays exciting. <laughs> but but Biden is so worn out that <laughs> there's no saving creepy. He He can't speak anymore. He makes me sound good. So, hmm. And I don't even want his wannabe job. And then, hey, here's another thing we could rant about is censorship. Now, I am not for censorship. I am for uh, not promoting or using what I don't approve of, you know, because that's freedom. Freedom is the, uh, the it's being allowed to be what it, you're, whatever you are, and then it's got the proviso, okay, as long as you do no harm. But that's like in parentheses in some anarchist backlog somewhere, right? So people do horrible things with film. Okay, well, I'm not here to promote it but, or nor stop it, but I, I won't use... You know, what doesn't interest me. So I think I just wanted to make a point of where I stand on, on it. Because when you start censoring people, then it never ends. So instead of censoring people, I would rather spend my time associating with people that share my taste in, you know, social activities. And fortunately for me, I'm not a pedophile, so one of my social activities isn't boinking little kids. And if it was, why, I'd be out there with other pedophiles boinking little kids thinking you were picking on me, I would assume. Because uh, <laughs> the world is, we need victims, okay? If you don't have victims, then what the fuck are the heroes going to all do? Sit around and drink coffee waiting for a call? No, they got to be constantly kept busy at all times. There's got to be a lot of chaos and mayhem and problems and shit to figure out and solve. And nobody could just have a nice, quiet life. That would be asking too much. <laughs> now, fortunately for me, I'm not smart enough to have a complicated life. It would be overwhelming and I'd probably fall down and complain. I'm Jewish, too. Hmm. Anyway, so censorship. I guess what I'm trying to say is the whole point of censoring somebody, whatever the fuck they say, do, or film, or write about, or however you, you express that, uh, it's not supposed to be judged on if it does any particular harm or not, in, in a sense, because words and... Uh, Ideas actually don't do any freaking harm. It's the actions <laughs> behind all those things. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think somebody that's attracted to something that I consider to be sick. I don't think there's anything ne necessarily wrong with that person, except for I don't agree with what they want to do. There you go. But. We live in a world of laws and judgments and this, that, and the other. And I've never visually encountered anybody in my fucking life ever hurting a child around me that I could ever visually see. So, hmm, I don't know. But uh, it's not to say that people don't. You know, when it comes to, you know, how they make, how they perform in public and all this shit... I don't know, you can't really fight it because then you're stepping on somebody's fucking right to do what they want to do. It's so complicated. Censorship. I don't I don't know where to censor. I just don't participate in things that offend me cuz Mary likes to pick on that. Oh, are you offended? Uh, maybe so. 
I'm sure that somewhere I have, you know, my mental limits to what I can tolerate. Okay. So the best I can do is just not participate by, you know, <laughs> watching whatever uh, promotion these weirdos have in store for me. But well, that's pretty much what movies and TV are. And they never censored any of the virus movies that they made that created this uh, imaginary virus that we have today that doesn't do anything. Well, okay. It doesn't do anything to the young. It, it attacks the crippled and the old. And crippled by being ill. If, you have a, if you've already run your damn life and you're fucking unhealthy, well, there you go. And now they're trying to make it sound like the healthy ones are going to fuck you up somehow. What? Well, what are you going to look at you and you're, oh, the, the germ is going to bounce off me and it's going to hit you and go, oh. <laughs> See, it's insane. This whole thing is stupid. Besides that, the virus, the, the family of virus they're talking about is dead tissue. <laughs> Well, there you go. There's lots of dead tissue around you right now. Nobody's asking you to wear a mask to stop that from entering your system. So, it, 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 we're just being, you know, bullshitted again. Of course, the truth about that gets censored. Hmm. Fucking Australia. They're they're never going to come out. Whatever this is, this is like, uh, it's going to run the course of a war. It's like Nazi Germany from what I've been seeing on the internet about that one particular country. I'm not picking up nothing nothing new from the Americas coming through. There's no riot information. I'd have to look for stuff. But uh, what do you call it? YouTube is not, it's not pushing that stuff. And what it is pushing is mostly here in Denmark. I'm getting, uh, and it's right in English, so I'm getting shit from Australia and what else? A little bit of New Zealand. Lots of Germany, though. Because <laughs> Germany is just a little bit away from here. I mean, they are the neighbors to the east, I believe. Ah, anyway. Censorship. What a problem to have. And, uh, let's see. Um... I don't know. I've been reading and hearing about these protests, and they've supposedly gone on for months, like three solid months. But protesting to me and a few of the folks on the reallibertymedia.com chat room, we think that protesting is begging your master to take his foot out of your ass. And we seem to also think that if you beg somebody to take their foot out, they're probably just going to put it a little further in just to see what you'll do. So begging them to do anything is fruitless. You just, you know, you're wasting your time. But once upon a time, back in the old days before we had instant everything, the government was more afraid of us, I think. They were, uh, now they, they've got so much control and such good, man, the police powers they got. Fuck, tanks and Water cannons, drones, they're like a military. I wouldn't want to fight them. I would have to go, no, police, you win. I am going away, oh, by oh. No, thank you. And uh, that's what I think people are going to do. When it comes, push comes to shove, you know, average Joe, we don't want to fight anyone. You know, when you think about it. You know, defending yourself is one thing, but wanting that, you know, is a... That's a whole nother story in itself. That, where we are, in my opinion, is that would be the last resort, would be to have to fight your way through whatever the hell, that all this drama that uh, the world wants to put. It's like it puts it out there that there's all this drama and shit going on, right? And then I take a stroll downtown, I go stop in my local tavern, I have a beer with my buddy, Everybody's there crowded in the room where, you know, we got to squish by to get through. It's a small bar. And nobody's bothered with uh, threats of dying from the COVID or none of this horse shit. Go to the grocery store. They've relaxed some of all this, uh, the stuff that they were using for barricades and whatnot. It was like ridiculous. Real heavy plastic to separate the, the aisle, the lane when you're shopping. It was just dumb. 
It all came down, and now they're just down to these clear plastic shields. And as we make fun of them, <laughs> it's... I, I, I. Anyway, not everybody, but I have a, a few of, of the store clerks that I've known over the years, and a little bit of English out of them is usually joking with me about the COVID still because they're stuck in it. Guys wearing gloves in August, in September. It's like, oh, man, it's ridiculous. And I don't think any anybody really seems like it's wearing off around here. I, I mean, I've noticed in the, when I go into the grocery store, less and less people are bothering with that hand fucking sanitizer nonsense. Wow. I mean, there's wash your filthy fucking hands, Johnny. What? Why do you need... Are you so filthy that you go to the grocery store and you need to wash, sanitize with goo, with fucking petroleum-based, God only knows what's in this shit. You're going to rub that all over your fucking hands and then what, touch your wife with your fucking hands? That way they, but this is what people think is normal. Not a lot of them anymore, but still, there's enough people that are terrified of the unknown and the movies they've all seen about the virus that's going to kill them. So they believe it. They don't find any reason to try to disprove it. What would the... I can understand. See? <laughs> I've been sitting in my silence for the last couple of weeks on the Tuesday night show because I didn't feel I had anything but complaining and nagging and wah, wah, wah to do. So I, I figured I'd, I'd put it off. And I hope tonight I, I'm not completely being a whiner. But some of these uh, ideas that we share as a collective are just stupid. <sighs> oh, man. You know, because uh, we're all connected, true, but not it's not a negative connection. And whenever there, it's brought to your attention as a carbon-based life form that you're connected to other people, the system is always bringing the negative side of that connection to you. It's never a good thing. Oh, look at all these great people you're connected to. It's always, oh, hey, watch out for those fuckers. They're going to get you sick and you're going to die. What? Uh, okay. I mean, that's, is that not, okay, maybe I should read the chat and see if anybody's paid attention, but uh, that's the kind of thing that I've noticed, that I, you know, recognize, I suppose. Um. <laughs> Grimnir says, you have to be a whiner or else give up your Jew card. Well, I, I, don't, I hate to tell you this out loud on the radio, Grim, but I don't, I don't have a Jew card. I only have a, a thing and a nose. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, okay, yeah, that's all right, Beetle. You you do what you got to do. This is just a, an attempt at leaving a, a memory behind me and being able to laugh at it if I listen to it later. Because I've gone back in some of the shows me and Mary have done over the few years on the dark table, and uh, a joke or two has been told. <laughs> so, let's see. I've gone over, we are, we are, oh, here we go. We're all the same, and yet we're not all the same. So, wow. How can, how can you make sense of something so bizarre? Because <laughs> I believe that people understand just exactly what that means in their own individual way. Because in ways, me and Cirque are very similar. And then in other ways, no, not so much, day and night. So, wow, how do you judge other people uh, by these hokey fucking uh, social rules that we've uh, adopted, I think? We've adopted them in, through lifetimes. comes out in writing and talking to each other and whatnot. And I broke the, I broke the damn Danish barrier. Nobody gives me any more shit, serious shit, about not speaking Danish here anymore. Now they've just kind of, ah, fuck, there's that idiot. That, and that's the end of it. And I have acquaintances where that we still have conversations. So life is balanced for me. I don't have too much or too little. Just a no. <laughs> but, oh, here's another note I got about. 
when healthy people kill, okay, because all this freaking idiotic COVID t testing nonsense, there's never been a proper test for what they're claiming to test for in the first place. This is, we've been doing this on our own for a long time. But what did they call that? They call that uh, asymptomatic, um, asymptomatic or something like that. I probably have the close. But what it meant was, well, you're healthy and you're not showing signs of being ill, but you're carrying this deadly lethal virus and you are a danger to others. And I think that's just a load of shit. But you tell the lie first and then, after it's been told a few million times, some idiot like me tries to come in and go, Hey, people, did you know you got lied to? And people go, What? Lied to about what? <laughs> that healthy people can get you sick. And they think, Think about it for just a minute. It's not difficult. <laughs> then they should tell you to shut up and you know, belief because you're rude. But how can somebody that's fucking healthy get me ill? This is what I want to know. This is what the uh, this whole thing is based on. Country to country to country. And there's only five. Uh, which were Nicaragua, Japan, Sweden, uh, Taiwan, and some one other. I always forget the fifth one. Or I probably doubled it. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm a healthy person, and I'm going to go out, and I'm going to infect you with what? You, If you're healthy, this thing will not, you will not get it. That's not how disease operates in the first fucking place. This particular kind of disease seeks out the weak and the sick. <laughs> so, And they got everybody convinced little kids are going to get it. Keep them separate. Put masks on them. And all these little kids are going to end up sick. Because of all this fucking separation and masks. They're fucking up the little kids. It's insane. And here I am an adult, right? I'm supposed to set the uh, uh, standard. What do I want my kids to do? Well, luckily for me, they're grown and it's over, so I don't got nothing to, talk, to worry about. But here I am in Denmark, and if I'm challenged with this freaking crap, to avoid problems, bringing problems on my wife, I have to go along with it. So, at that moment, I'm going to be the biggest hypocrite in the world. But until that day comes, you know, I'm not for any of this shit. And I know better. But we are, we're living under this totalitarian bullshit where people can just make up rules and laws and enforce them at their fucking whim based on absolutely fucking nothing. Stupid. And they just keep the old ones, older than me probably, the older ones, sick and scared so they'll keep, you know, fueling it. Let's keep this on. Oh, look how well the masks are working. Nobody's dying anymore. <laughs> now, not a COVID. <laughs> it's uh, everything else that's catching up to them, though. And the shit for, uh, from the lockdowns. I've read enough about, like, suicide rates went up. Hmm. I mean, this is just unbelievable. This whole planet is, it's being run by psychos with, you know, crazy ideas. And they sell these ideas. They're bullshit. They sell them to the public. And the public just gets a little more uh, damaged. Every Every decision maker that seems to make a decision puts us a little further away from the truth. Just a, a little smidgen here, a little smidgen there, and in 20 more years, people will think you're born with a fucking mask on and you don't have an immune system. Oh, that was the 1900s. <laughs> immune systems, oh, that went out. <laughs> you got the IRF chip now. <laughs> anyway. But, maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. I could do a rant on... Uh, Hey, they did call it a study, right? Yeah, suicide equals COVID death. I don't know. I still don't know anybody, Grimner, that is dead as a result of this fucking COVID. So whether, you know, and it's been a long time. You'd think that over the, the last 10 months or so, 
Somebody would have got killed by COVID. No, nobody, not one person. So some pandemic and, and to these, you know, I guess I'll just go back to what I think about it all, which is this is a financial collapse. And the only way that the state could pull this off without even worse results was to slow it down with this bullshit about a virus that's going to kill us. And all this locking everybody down so they can't go out and do anything and shutting down the businesses. Why would anybody shut down a business? Well, let's see. Hmm. Because they can't afford to operate their business, perhaps. Would that be a reason that the uh, the taxes and the, the restrictions, <clears throat> the regulations are so out of control that a small business can't operate anymore? can't keep up and they keep getting what maybe they get fines or they get warnings or something who knows but on the other hand maybe they just ran out of money and printing it electronically is one thing but that pittance of cash flow that they use in the daily routine that's not that's nothing and in the overall i mean the big banks are claiming they're trading five trillion dollars a day with a T trillion dollars a day. Ah, oh, see, Kate, I'm we're not in that, so I'm relying on you guys to tell me how it is back home because I I don't I got a whole different deal. But the threat of all this crap is coming this way, and geez, it, over a hoax. I mean, come on, people so embarrassing to be a human being right now bullied around by a bunch of incompetent fucking thieving chumps and most people are just not up to fighting it i understand that i'm an older guy i don't want to fight either but i mean part of me does (laughs) you know it's like hmm I maybe it's time for me to stop being childish and grow up and all that crap but you know i really did have freedom in my life where um, I think freedom is what you believe. It's not got nothing to do with what you're physically doing. That's all bullshit. It's all in your mind, how you see the world and how you interact with other people, what you allow other people to do. For example, Uh, I'm very free with other people being nice. When other people are not very nice, I get the fuck away from them. People don't want to be around people that are nasty. So I avoid them. Oh, yeah, let's go to that. He says, they are, Grimner, they are bankrupting entire countries to get them further under the thumb. Yeah, they want to reset so that, yeah, that's why they're stopping all the food production. So that if you don't get a card, you ain't going to eat. And if you try it, there's no black market to eat from. Sport, we we took out the supply lines (laughs) from the ground up. This is so well thought out. It's so. They had a hundred years to plan for it because they knew it was going to happen. Shit, it happened in the twenties, and that was only what seven years after they started this Federal Reserve shit. Anyway, I, sir, am not a doomsdayer or a naysayer. I think that if you broke all this shit up into smaller components, that it would function just fine. You know, you wouldn't be able to get your shoes from Italy and your shirts from China and your blowjobs from um, Taiwan. But, you know, a small community, eh, considering what's going on with most of the bigger cities and shit, all this protesting and riots, and who could live like that? What in the fuck is the point of protesting for months? I thought a protest was like a one-day thing or one-hour thing. Hey! President, we don't like your breath. Use this mouthwash, okay? And you go there and you tell them. Not day after fucking day for months, then it's a vocation. (laughs) George Soros is cutting a check, so, you know, you can go out there and stand around and be counted in a big group by, I guess, drones or something. (laughs) Some kind of microwave... uh, they're, they're, these people are dangerous. Whoever they are in the state, I, I don't like the state. But then again, 
Now that I see what the people are like, I'm sure glad I don't live there no more. In fact, any any major city right now has got me put off. I was talking to my brother-in-law about Freetown the other night. And there's nothing appealing about it anymore because things change, see? And uh, hmm, outside control is, wow, these, these globalists or whatever this fucking game is, this money game. It's all about money. It's not really about anything else. They want to take the paper money away from us so that we got to have a card. And uh, they've taken away most, a lot of countries have gone really crazy with seeds, outlying seeds, outlying gardens. What? And then where I live, I don't think, I don't think anybody would even understand what outline a garden means in this country. Because they... <laughs> People just grow, when we were in Copenhagen, they, people just had gardens on the street. There was always something growing in Copenhagen. So I would assume, you know, the bigger city is like that, of course, where I live. People around here have gardens. Or flowers, lots of flowers. They like to be outside and when it, the weather's good and try to bring a little something into the ground. That much I've noticed. But I've read back home... And other countries, there's um, government restrictions for your own good, for your welfare, because uh, hmm. I don't really know what kind of bullshit story these people are pulling on everybody, but it seems to be working. That is the core of my mm, discomfort, is that so few people are really understanding what this is, what's going on around them, this global thing. The masses are just clueless. They're just in a big group. See this herd thing? They got them suckered into that herd mentality bullshit. When the last thing you need to be in is a big group. What you need is a small group. That's, you know, or maybe a family. I used to have one. <laughs> but they passed on. But uh, it was a small group. You know, it wasn't huge, but we could depend on each other and such. And I guess maybe that's the lesson that you're supposed to learn is to find people that are like you, you know, that you can interact with openly and get along with. And some people are really fucked up. And they take these ideas and they take them into areas that that idea doesn't really belong. <laughs> Cuz we have freedom. So, hmm. And freedom is a motherfucker because, well, who are you to tell me what I can do is the whole crux of the whole thing. Because depending on the topic, I would immediately be my first question to somebody judging my action. Okay. Who the fuck are you to tell me I can or cannot do something? All right. Now, that's one thing. Then you start bringing in uh, hmm, things that are out of sight, but they're on your mind because some idiot made a movie about it <laughs> and, and stuffed it in your face so you had to go, Hey! <laughs> and uh, that, I don't think that's freedom. I think that having something shoved in my face, that was forced. I wasn't... You know, because I have to read it to decide for myself if this is something I want to see. So, using my freedom, I try to use my freedom at my own risk and live with the results of it. And I see something I don't like, I go, whoa, huh, huh, and I skip through it as fast as I can and go on to something else that I do like. Fortunately, not everybody else is like that. And the weirdos that the uh, bizarreness in life attracts... They're going to be weirdos no matter if they see a movie or if they don't see a movie. You're, we're arguing about these things that are deep-rooted in people that they don't need. Outside in stimulation doesn't even work on them. They're already there. <laughs> uh, how could I? I guess I could compare that to, uh, I got married to a woman, so there must be something to that, right? 
my interests were obvious to me. <laughs> now, uh, if I was a single 60-year-old guy that liked to drool over kids like Joe Biden, I think other people would notice that. I don't, I don't get where all this weird weirdo shit comes along. Where does it happen? I never see it. So, eh. But back to the sense, it's a censorship issue because... People have these ideas about being protected from shit. Well, that's not life. That's virus. <laughs> that's virus talk. Because you can't, you can't have it both ways. We either want freedom or we want totalitarian restriction. And I choose freedom over totalitarian restriction. And it loosens up. It broadens my ability to be disgusted well, maybe not my ability. I'd still be disgusted, but I am not going to try to impose my will over yours because I don't like what you did. I just don't support it. <laughs> that's that's how small my life is. I'm just a little guy out here in a little place in Quietville. And, you know, if somebody wanted to watch a movie about a bunch of weirdos, that's it's on them, not me. All I can say at the end of that is, wow, fucking weirdos. <laughs> well, I mean, well, okay, sir, I'm not for it. And I am, well, I, I, if I'm, okay, but see, telling another artist how to fucking make their art is, wow, ooh, I, don't, I don't think I'd like that. Somebody telling me how to do my art, so... It crosses a lot of lines. It's insanity. We're, we're, we're dealing with just things that don't apply to us in the first place, is what it is. But it got my attention, so I wanted to spew on it for a while. But I'm going to go with, I'm going to pick the facts that I like, and I'm going to stick with those. I think, in the long run, looking at this COVID thing for the last 10 months or so, what's it been, about 10 months? Something like that. Uh, I've done that. I've picked the facts that I agree with, that make sense to me, and I've gone with those. So is that safe to assume that the other guy, the guy that's cowering in his basement because he's going to die of COVID any day now, has looked at all the facts, and he's chosen the facts he likes, and he's gone with them? Is that possible? Uh, that's what I think. Because there's plenty of stories out there to go with. You can go. There's two sides to this. <laughs> Maybe we're all wrong. But I'm going to pick the facts I like anyway. And I'm going to go with things like uh, wearing a mask while you walk around is nuts. Uh, what else? Oh, the social distancing thing. What the fuck is wrong with people? Wow. Even when I'm antisocial... And I go down to the bar, and, and I sit at the far away place at the bar. There's oftentimes people within six feet of that seat. They're just they're, there's a just a noticeable difference because it's such a small place. But uh, wow, six six feet of distance from somebody else as a defense mechanism. Hmm, you're defending yourself from the evil. Goo goo that's crawling all over Hugo, right? Huh. So dead tissue now can jump what six feet, but only but no. It's stupid. I'm. I don't even know what to say about any of this nonsense. We've been fucked. Ah. But you know, if you don't look at it, I guess. Well, I guess if you don't look at it, it's easier to make a decision about it. Just take the word of the state. Uh-oh. Hey, Rob Works. What difference does it make to... I must have missed something here. Hold on here. I'm trying to read chat. Oh, he's debating on the RLM chat. And they're now they're ha 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 it up. Oh, okay. Let's go with something else that's kind of different. I've read lately. It's been kind of disturbing me. Uh... That the food we eat and the delivery of our electricity and the water that we drink, polluted water with added crap in it like uh, fluoride and whatnot, 
that all these things are being done to us on purpose so that we could purposely be mentally held back. Because the human being is an incredible damn instrument, completely. I mean, and let alone just what we can think of, but just that by itself is one thing. But what you can physically do that you take so much uh, for granted, oh, I don't. I When I walk to the damn store and I take my time sometimes, and I purposely look for people that are older than me that are struggling so that I can feel good about at the age I'm at. I'm not hurt down. I'm not broke down yet. And, uh, you know, I'm still lucky enough to be able to, to physically do these things. And these other people worked or had an accident or maybe they were born badly or whatever happened to them. But, you know, their life went that way and they, they can't walk anymore. Not freely. You know, they're using walkers and all this kind of stuff. So, I don't know, um, that sounded like an uppity kind of thing. It's more like I'm, uh, I see it as like a blessing to be <laughs> today. Cirque, I forgot to go do something for the cat yesterday when I was out. And the first thing in the morning, I woke up and I remembered and I went, oh, holy shit, I forgot to do the thing for the cat. Or I tried to and the store was closed. Something like that happened. Anyway, so I get up and I decide oh, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go knock this out. And it's a, about a 10-minute walk up to the pet store. It's no big thing. And I, boom, boom, boom. And I come back and got the cat stuff. Not made me. See, I do these things to make myself feel better. Because the cat, the poor cat, he just knows that there's some nasty shit that's coming on his back. He doesn't know it's good for him. I don't think. But, you know, we do these horrible things to the cat to keep him healthier so he doesn't get, you know, sick and die. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so what, what I was going on is uh, we're being held back mentally by all the input, the fuel, the... Jesus Christ, the fucking TV. There's, and well, the internet too, because you can pick up all this crap off the internet. Old TV shows and movies, and if you sit down in the right frame of mind and you openly watch this stuff, and you look for things, you'll find them. I found plenty of, uh, <laughs> what would what would you call that? Mind, I guess, uh, controlling. I did. They set ideas in your head in films that are not true. But in the entertainment world, you don't have to be factual to make a film. In fact, assuming that a movie has got any fact to it is the problem that I think we've acquired. You know, that's where all the censorship comes in. Instead of, you know, uh, I wouldn't watch that if you paid me to watch it, has turned into, don't anybody watch that. Well, hmm. Whew, it's such a razor blade. Hmm. And I think that the kind of person that has drawn into that stuff, they're a product of the bad food and the bad water and the bad electricity. That's a very extreme example of the damage that the food and the water and the fuel that we use does to us. It brings out, uh, and then the way they run society too, it, they purposely breed thieves and murderers by overcrowding and undernourishing. So they've done experiments with all kinds of animals over the years and years and years, and now they're doing it to us. And they're calling it a pandemic, but it's a series of, uh, laboratory experiments they've done on animals. Animals, prisoners, slaves, you know, niggers, spicks, pansies, Jews, the whole, you name it, they've done it to these people. And now they're doing it to everybody all at one time. Except for five countries managed to stay out of it. Hmm. And the ones that are just Klingons, like Denmark, we're just hanging on the outside right now. But then there's countries like She's America, Canada, UK, Australia. I don't know what the fuck's going on in Russia or China. I don't hear anything anymore about that. I haven't even heard Hans complain about Russia in six months. 
So, hmm. It's like the whole world just vanished. It's all gone. The only places left are Canada, the UK, Germany, Australia, and New Zealand. <laughs> Every place else, nah, nothing to see here, folks. Go back to your TV set. There's a program on for your, you know, stuff. But we do preach fake results on the uh, Internet. Hmm. And I say we because I've read a few things that I believed at first and went with them and found out later. Hey, wait a minute. That was nonsense. You know, because you live and learn, I suppose. But some of these, uh, some of the frauds that we encounter in the Internet world seem pretty real at the time when you first see them. They're like, <laughs> I get I get slapped in the head. I, of course, I come from the old days when we had to read shit. <laughs> Dial telephones. <laughs> Call ahead to make an appointment. <laughs> you know, you couldn't just click your phone and wait for results. Like, it took time back in the day. I kind of miss those days when you could just go out. You know, when you're feeling all sick and shit, you can't even, you can't even hardly walk. Those are the times where I want to go out to the grocery store and load up a big old bunch of food you know i mean see how insulting this whole covid thing is is when people are ill we've been see we've been dumbed down to the point where we don't even think enough of each other to assume that if somebody was feeling ill they would stay home and take care of their self no you know what they're going to do they're going to go out to the grocery store and sneeze all over the produce and that's what we've been trained to, to worry about and believe. And even if somebody that was ill did such a thing, if you're not already ill, whatever they do to those vegetables, you can wash it off and it's not going to affect you. They've done tests over the years, hundreds and hundreds of tests, years and years ago. It's been documented. But... The old stuff got all buried and shoved aside. And, hey, don't look at that. That's old old crap. Look, new and improved. <laughs> yeah, we got new and improved, all right. That's why we're burning oil instead of using hemp. Hmm? I think we could cure this whole fucking problem with a like, three-step plan. I haven't brought my... Ah, we're coming up to the end. I'll bring up my three-step plan and close this out. I've got three steps for you folks out there in Radio Land, if you want to try them. And the first step is stop living in the lies. You know, if you know it's a lie, don't do it. Okay? Two, stop killing people. That's all. Easy to do. If you're not killing people, don't start killing people. They'll die all by themselves. Leave them alone. And number three, grow hemp like you know what you're doing. And I think in six months, we have the technology and a whole shitload of guys all over and gals all around the world working on projects in secrecy and privacy because they're afraid the government finds out they're going to steal it from them and suppress it. But eventually, we're going to, you know, we're going to win in the long run, whatever that is. And it, it kind of insinuates a fight. Uh, hmm, how I mean it is... You can lie to everybody, and you can fool a lot of them, but you can't fool all of them. You know, some people are just going to know, and there's enough of us that have that stand that we know something that the masses don't seem to be getting. <laughs> well, while the government's all killing them off with mass and lockdowns and food shortages and all this other happy ass shit that they were warned about, it wasn't like we didn't tell them. But they did kind of fuck up the uh, definition of the word anarchy. Because if you watch TV or read news, watch uh, certain people on the internet webs, why anarchy is some kind of violent attitude towards your fellow man. You go around, no, that's stupid. Anarchists are a lazy lot. What we want is leave us alone. There you go. We won't bother you. You don't bother us. We don't want to be ruled. Not there are no rules. We've got a code. We don't kill you. You don't kill me. 
I don't steal from you. You don't steal from me back. There's it. There, the two rules. Now, if you like those two rules, you can be an anarchist. It's not difficult, but there's no group to join. There's no secret handshake. There's no cap. <laughs> there's no meeting. Uh, you don't recognize each other on the fucking street. And, you know, no. That, it's just a mindset that you can adopt to live your life with. Because no matter how I feel or what I think or what I believe, there still is that outside physical reality to deal with. Which is why I went on the rant about censorship, because it's such a freaking uh, razor blade to stand on. You know, because if I'm going to tell you what you can do, then I'm giving you permission to tell me what I can do. And we shouldn't have to live like that. We should already be in tune with what is right and what is wrong and just get along with each other. And all these picky ass little fucking details about, you know, uh, movies and songs and art and whatever, how people dress, you name it, and what color their fucking hair is. <laughs> It's everywhere. And uh, I've, over the years, when I see the little kid five, six years old, and they got their head shaved and the top's once, you know, orange or green or something, I just figure they're just little kids having fun, playing colorful games. Ain't hurting anybody. But other people have different ideas, you know. So, hmm. I guess... Uh, I'm going to censor stuff in my own way, but I'm not going to censor them for you, is what I was... Yeah, that was... I was hard to understand what I was trying to say to myself, you know? Um, I think it's all a very personal matter, and one size will never fit all, you know? And the best we can do is just get along with the people that we know and avoid the freaks and weirdos that make you feel like uh, shooting them in the face with a gun. <laughs> because they're out there and they're advertising and they're looking for trouble. So I think that with the times being so aggressive right now, especially keeping your head and staying cool through all this drama that's going on, it's fucking difficult. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I'm trying, but uh, hmm. it's very disturbing to see people wearing masks to ride a bus. I don't... I doesn't seem to serve any purpose to me, but they're doing it. And my anger is that if they don't comply, somebody might fuck with them. So, ugh. I'm not going to add on to that pile and start fucking with them too. You know, I just feel bad and go on my way. And, pro and hopefully... We'll be able to keep my word and not have to break down and wear one. But if I do, I got this. Uh, <laughs> I've got a bandana, American flag bandana made in China. <laughs> I think I'll use that. So anyway, thanks a lot, you guys in the RLM for that. I don't know. I just had an hour rant about nothing in particular. I tried to keep a few notes for you there, Grim, so you'd have something to write on the thing. But uh, I struggle a little bit doing the show solo. It's it's not as easy as, as with Mary or Rob or Larry Woods, any of the people out in the back, you know, pass. But let me get all this stuff together so I can shut it all down and give you guys back the RLM. 58.49, look at that, I got a minute left. Ooh, I'm overachieving. So let's get the, what you call it thing here. Oh, and you... Open up the RLM, reallibertymedia.com, and there's a schedule for all the other shows, because Grimm's doing a show with Sir, Grimm does a show with with Moose, uh, I do one with Larry and Rob, I do one with Mary on Saturday, blah, 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 there's other people on the site, wait a minute, stop or start, oh, I opened up the wrong one, hold on, I'm almost done here, uh, it's hard to talk and uh compute at the same time <laughs> ah, that does not compute okay and here we go thanks everybody over and out